It's just another average day around this crowded dining room table, but instead of serving a hot meal, the main course is English literature. George Horton has been gathering students in his Hamilton home for English as a second language classes for a couple of years now, willing to teach anyone who wants to learn. But recently, George started a new job that has gotten some attention. Mr. Horton is actually Reverend Horton, a minister for over 25 years, and he's brushed off his collar once more. This time, he's the newest addition to the chaplaincy program at the City of Hamilton Police Services, and this isn't his first time in uniform. In fact, the job was offered to him while he was at a church dinner. I know Chief Mullen for a long time, and he, uh, he came in, we were having dinner, and he said, Chief, come have a seat. And he said, no, no, I can't stay. I've just got another meeting to go to. Uh, he said, but I, I want to talk to you about something. I said, yeah, well, what, what is it? He said, how do you feel about being our chaplain? Mm. I said, Chief, are you you're kidding? He said, no. <laughs> well, Reverend Horton automatically yeah, said yes. And now a few months on the job, we soon learned that there was much more to this new chaplain than just his love for uniforms. Reverend Horton has had an exciting life, and it all started in a small South American country called Guyana. When I left high school, I hadn't decided what I wanted to do when I grew up. Um, so I started working in a, in a, in a sugar factory, uh, in, the, in the lab, laboratory in the sugar factory. Um, I wasn't excited about that. So then the job of a telephone operator came up. And so I did that temporarily. But while I was doing that, that I would be in contact with people in Barbados who were police. I would be in contact with people in Georgetown that were policemen. And we'd have chats at night, you know, to keep each other, other operators. And, you know, it, it sound, seemed ex exciting. The flag and but it was also his love of sports that attracted him to the force as well. The police had the best athletic team in the country. And so that was a, another drawing card. Of course, the other thing was the uniform, you know. And so, and the thing about the uniform is, is that um, in those days, you had to, the first year, you had to be in uniform all the time. You know, it was almost an offense to be caught out of uniform. So it meant that I didn't have to go buying clothes, right? So I could save the money. I, because ultimately the plan was to, what we call, going abroad to study. But before he would leave Guyana, George and a group of friends formed a Christian association within the police force. The four of us started as the police witness team, mm. traveling all over the country, preaching and singing and, 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 you know, sometimes it wasn't always a religious program, sometimes with political, uh, uh, ceremonial things, uh, um, the, the town hall in Berbice or some other counties. In your uniform? In uniform, wow. yeah. Wow. Then, after serving six years in the police force, it was time to move on, and the American University Morgan State in Maryland became his new home during one of the most tumultuous times in American history. We had segregation all around us. We couldn't cross the road to go to, to the stores or to get a haircut. In fact, while George was there, a well-known young preacher by the name of Martin Luther King Jr. helped organize student protests in the segregated community surrounding the school. We had sit-ins uh, in the mall and some, of, some were arrested. I couldn't afford to get arrested because I was a foreign student. I could get, you know, who knows? At the time I thought they could deport me or something. But we were there um, for, the, for the, you know, the school, the rallies. And the outcome of that was that the, the place was, we could go, we could dis we got, it got desegregated. But while the country was fighting a civil rights war, George was having his own inner struggles. He was running away from something and someone bigger. They gave me a scholarship to go to Princeton Theological Seminary. And I said to my friends, the last thing in the world I wanted to be is a minister. I mean, it's one thing being a Christian, another thing being my grandfather, I saw how he suffered, you know. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so um, I was struggling against that. But again, when the time came to graduate, instead of taking, accepting the Princeton 
theological scholarship. I went to NYU to study anthropology instead, which is it's not that far away, but it's not you know it's not <laughs> it's not where I, where you know he wanted me to be. Where God wanted him to be still wasn't clear. If you know anything about not until he says he heard a radio broadcast by American pastor Chuck Swindoll. He was preaching about how could you, who have tasted, you know, of the goodness of God, how could you have turned away from this? And he scared me by saying, you know, it is almost impossible for you to turn back. Uh, so the, the, next, the next day I, I went and he was, you know, he was on the same subject again on the way to, on the way to work. And I went that day and that day was a, a true, total wipeout. We were working on budgets with all these different places, and uh, I was tearing. I couldn't see. I was blind. I could, and I finally decided uh, it's a waste of time. I'll just sh shut the thing, the files, and I got in my car and I drove. And I didn't know where I was going, but I drove and I ended up at on Lake Ontario. So our church. Was After spending hours talking to God and getting no response, he jumped back in the car. Yeah. This time, ending up at so McMaster Theological see. Seminary where his friend was the dean. I said, Murray, I don't know what's going on here in my life, but I'm really miserable. And uh, I told him all that I said. And he said, what took you so long? Following that conversation and much thought and prayer, George decided that seminary was where he needed to be. And with that, he quit his job, enrolled into full-time studies, and by 1984, he was ordained as a pastor. After serving over 25 years, he has since tried to retire twice, but keeps getting called back to ministry. On my 65th birthday, officially retirement, I retired from King Street Baptist Church. Uh, can I show you something? You see that, that, that cup up there, it said, old ministers oh, yes. never, never die. die. They just go out to pastor. <laughs> yeah, and that's what happened. Yeah, so I retired, and then the next thing is, this uh, church, Stuart Memorial Church, calls me to say, can you help us out one Sunday or two Sundays a month now that you're retired? Mm. And that became two and three and four. And uh, I did that for almost 10 years after retirement, so I'm 74 now. Now in his mid-70s, Reverend Horton is now starting a new chapter in his life, returning to the uniform, this time as a police chaplain. Well, one, one thing is that, that it's... It's not a new experience um, because I've been a, an officer before for six years. Been through a lot of things, you know, um, violent things. So I, it's not that I'm, I'm totally aware of all the possibilities. But the other thing is, as a pastor, you, whether you're in, you know, whether you're chaplain or you're on the street, you know, in ministry, wherever you are, you are prepared to do whatever is necessary, you know? Um, whether it's got to do with people in jail or people that are depressed or people, you know, mental problems or uh, whatever. Yeah. You know, that's what you're trained to do. And even though he's not on the front lines anymore as a police officer or as a pastor, it's clear that this new role is just as important to him. And for someone who is used to always being active, one can only wonder, what will be next? There's so much to be done and so much to give of oneself mm. that I don't know when, you know, when, you know, it, it'll, it'll be some time. Mm. Yeah. I may take some time out in between to do some traveling because we still like to do that before we, for all the aches and pains and the mm. old war injuries set in. But we'll see. Mm -hmm, we'll see. But until then, this ex-police officer is proud to still don the uniform. It just now says, Chaplain. In Hamilton, Ontario, Magdalene John, 100 Huntley Street.